Remember from the section on natural ventilation that vents are not 100% efficient, and we assume the default value of 0.6 or 60% for the coefficient of inlet. This applies even if the vents uh, that are being used are doorways. The expression shown here is an inequality, and that is to say that AI is not set as being equal to the value of the right-hand side of the equation, but it is set as having to be greater than or equal to that value. It has to be at least that size. In our example from earlier steps in this uh, course, we had a situation where we had six fans, each with a capacity of 11 cubic metres per second. And so the maximum extraction rate that we could expect in, in such a building at any one time is 66 cubic metres per second. If you remember that example, the required volumetric extraction rate was 50.35 cubic metres per second. But this figure has no significance here and neither does the 55 cubic metres per second that would be extracted if one of the fans were lost to fire. We're interested in the maximum possible extraction rate that can take place in the building. And for, the, for our example, this was 66 cubic metres per second. Putting our figures into the equation gives us the results shown here. AI must be greater than or equal to 66 divided by 5 multiplied by 0.6. And if we evaluate that, we get AI has to be greater than or equal to 22 square metres. We've assumed here that members of the public will be using the building, and so that's why we've used the figure of 5 in the equation for the upper limit for the velocity of the incoming air. What this tells us is that if we have a total of 22 square metres of inlet area, then the replacement air will enter at 5 metres per second. But if we have more than 22 square metres of inlet area, then air will enter at a slower velocity. And, that, and that if we have less than 22 square metres of inlet area, then air will enter at a greater and unacceptable velocity. That concludes the input for this step. Now Dave's going to take you through some examples. And after that, there'll be some exercises that you can undertake on your own to confirm your understanding of this aspect of smoke control.